Hey everyone, it is Dr. Kyle. It is almost mid-December here and it is officially snowing for the first time with some accumulative snow on the ground, which means that people are going to be facing for the first time this year, really, um, the decision on how to shovel their driveway, how to shovel their walkway, and whether or not to leave the house in their car. And those are decisions that um, unfortunately are going to become a reality for us over the next couple months here living in northern Illinois. Whereas a couple months ago, the majority of the injuries that we would see in the office coming in are things like um, athletic injuries or, or things like that. Now, of course, we're going to be shifting where a lot of the injuries that come in are going to be more like slips or falls on the ice. Um, unfortunately, motor vehicle accidents as the roads get tricky. And then number three on that list that becomes very common right now is snow shoveling injuries. So I want to share just a few tips today, speaking specifically about shoveling snow, things that you can do to ensure that whatever you're doing or however long your driveway is, however much work you have to do, you're doing it as safe as possible to limit either creating a new injury or making an old injury worse. So there's a few things to start off with right before you even pick up the shovel, before you, you start the snow blower, things that you can do to make sure your body is prepped and ready. The first of that is to simply stretch. Treat yourself like an athlete. That means doing some stretching throughout your waist, your low back, your legs, your arms. Really work through all the areas that are going to be involved as you're out there doing this. The most common area to create an injury or, or exacerbate an injury when snow shoveling is your low back. The second most common are your wrists and arms and hands. And then the third most common is your neck and your head. So think about those three areas when you're stretching. Focus on each one of those. Take your time and plan out where you have enough time to do this properly. If you become too rushed, if you have to, a deadline because you have to get the car out of the driveway or anything like that, and you go faster, you're more likely to have bad form, which is more likely to lead to injury. So make sure if you know there's snow coming, wake up, make up, sorry, wake up with a little bit extra time, um, or consider just doing the part of your driveway or your walkway that you're going to be using right then to get it done and to get it done quickly so you're not spending extra time and feeling rushed and, and losing proper form and function while you do this. Make sure you bundle up nice and warm. Of course, you want to be comfortable out there, but what that also does is it makes sure that your muscles stay nice and relaxed. If you're cold and you're stiff and you're doing jerky motions or you're lifting with heavy weights, you're more likely to create a soft tissue strain or sprain in your muscles, tendons, and ligaments. So make sure you're nice and warm when you do this. Um, I'll follow up with this too. This is before you start to shovel or before you snow low, but make sure you're doing a lot of these things afterwards or during as well. Take some time between to stretch. If you find yourself hunched over a lot, stretch back and open up your chest. Take a little bit of time after you're done once you get inside and you're warmed up um, to do some of those same exercises or stretches just like an athlete would after a game to make sure your body is recovered as well. If you're a patient in the office, you probably have a wobble cushion. This is an amazing stretch or exercise for your low back specifically, but it's really going to affect up and down your spine. You can do those same motions that you do here in the office, front and back, side to side, counterclockwise, clockwise. Run through that as much as you need to. It's an amazing warm up. If you don't have one of those, a yoga ball or an exercise ball would be a pretty good fill in for that. So keep that in mind. When you are actually out there getting that snow out of the way, Here's the first thing. If you're able to get a snowblower or some kind of mechanical assistance, that is going to be the best option for you. It's just going to cut down on how much physical work you have to do. But if you're somebody that does use a shovel, you not don't have access to a, a mechanical assistant, um, there's a couple of very simple things. First and foremost, try and push straight ahead. Don't push off to the side and don't push up and or I should say lift up and throw and twist once you reach the end of the driveway or the end of the, the area that you're going to. Simply push it to the end. That heavy twisting motion and lifting motion is where a lot of these injuries come from. If you are forced to bend and lift and twist or pull, make sure that you are lifting with your legs and you are turning and using your arms and the strength in those muscles in order to throw the snow. Do not torque your low back with a half twist. That is going to create severe stress on the discs in your low back. The muscles will tighten up and you're risking a subluxation or a nerve injury when you do that. So just like you think proper form and function when you're lifting anything, lift with your legs, bend your knees, keep your back straight and use your arms and shoulders in order to fully twist. And again, when it comes to when you're out there doing it, make sure you take breaks occasionally to stretch, to move around, get a little bit of water. It is easy to get dehydrated. Even if it's cold, you may not think about that, but it is important to stay hydrated if you're out there so long that you actually are risking that. Some very simple tricks. 
Again, if something happens, make sure that you, uh, if you're a patient here in the office, come in, let us know. We're going to address those things with you. We understand that these are some interesting um, circumstances over the next couple of weeks, and we're going to be able to work through that with you. If you see another chiropractor, please make sure that you're upfront with them about what's happening. And if you don't see a chiropractor yet or somebody that maintains your spine and the muscles that support it, please consider finding a good chiropractor that will evaluate so that whether you're throwing snow, whether you're walking on ice, or anything that you're doing over the next couple of months, you're as safe as possible. Have a wonderful Merry, uh, Merry holiday if I don't see you. And then uh, make sure you stay safe out there, everyone. Have a great day. Enjoy the snow.